a reading from the book of Exodus. In the third month after the departure from the land of Egypt, on his first day, the children of Israel came to the desert of Sinai. After the journey from Rephidim in the desert of Sinai, they pitched camp. While Israel was encamped in front of the mountain, the Lord told Moses, I am coming to you in a dense cloud, so that when the people hear me speaking with you, they may always have faith in you also. When Moses then had reported to the Lord the response to the people, the Lord added, go to the people and have them sanctify themselves today and tomorrow. Make them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai before the eyes of all the people. On the morning of the third day, there were peals of thunder and lightning, and a heavy cloud covered the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast so that all the people in the camp trembled. But Moses led the people out of the camp to meet God, and they stationed themselves at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was all wrapped in smoke, for the Lord had come down upon it in fire. The smoke rose as, it, as though it were from a furnace, and the whole mountain trembled violently. The trumpet blast grew louder and louder while Moses was speaking, and God was answering him with thunder. When the Lord came down to the top of the Mount Sinai, he summoned Moses to the top of the mountain. The word of the Lord. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, God, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of the heaven, praiseworthy and and glorious above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to the little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Thank you, Jesus. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. Mary stayed outside the tomb, weeping, and as she wept, 
she bent over into the tomb and saw the two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you laid him and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he told her. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the feast of Saint Mary Magdalene. And one of those figures that weaves in and out of the story of the life of Jesus. And, and this encounter at the tomb, I think, draws our hearts and our minds to several things. Uh, first off, that Jesus reveals himself to Mary. And he reveals himself to her before others, before the apostles. And there's something in this extension of Jesus revealing himself to Mary that reflects the heart of Jesus and the mission at which he came to, uh, to serve. And is that he wasn't coming first and foremost to the most important those of highest rank, those of greatest position. He came to those who were in deepest need. So Mary Magdalene is one whom he says that he cast seven demons out of. And so it's amazing that he would reveal himself to her as well as she, after having the demons cast out, devoted her life and service of Jesus and his mission. And we see Jesus doing this time and time again. There is not a prefer preferential option for the powerful, it's the preferential option for the poor, those most in need. So it's beautiful that he reveals himself to Mary. But there's another thing that I think is most important for us to uh, take from this feast that the church gives us to focus on and, and Mary's response to the whole crucifixion event. One could say in part that the reason Mary encounters Jesus is because even after his death, she was still seeking Jesus. She was the first one to the tomb while the apostles are holed up in the house. She is there to care for, the, um, uh, for what she understood to be the dead body of Jesus. While the apostles are back mourning or in fear, we're not quite sure what, but she is there attending to the Lord. Now in the verses we don't get, in the, we skip there in John today, she runs back, tells the apostles, Peter and John and her run back to the tomb. They go in, they look, they're a little confused. They're filled with hope, but they go back. And then it says, Mary stays at the tomb. She continues to weep and to pursue the Lord and wondering what has happened to my Savior. And Jesus then appears to her. And she has the encounter with the angels. I think the principle for us is those that find Jesus are those who are seeking Jesus. 
are pursuing Jesus. The apostles did not encounter him at the same time. Maybe they would have if they would have stayed. Maybe God only wanted to reveal to Mary. But what we know is she was pursuing the Lord. And in part, I think you see, she was one who was profoundly transformed. Having seven demons cast out, utterly transformed her life. She was not an intellectual participant in the life of Jesus. She had been transformed. Now, each of the apostles had seen transformative things, but really had yet to have their maybe personal encounter with the Lord that really transformed them. Peter eventually has this as he's restored after his fall. But maybe that's what motivates her to seek Jesus because she knows what a transformative encounter with Jesus can do in the life of the person. And so even after his death, she is going to be present, attend to him, and seek the Lord. Uh, so for us today, as we continue with this liturgy, as we prepare to receive the Lord in the Eucharist, it's a worthy question for us. How are you and I seeking the Lord? Not just present, not just learning and studying, but seeking the Lord, surrendering to the Lord. It always takes surrender. It always takes brokenness. How are we pursuing that? Because it's in that pursuit, that's when the Lord comes to those who are in greatest need, those who are on their knees before him. That's where the Lord meets us, in that place of seeking him. Even if we don't know a whole lot of information, but we are sincere in our pursuit of God, he will meet us, meet you at that place and point of need. Amen? Amen. Amen.